How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Junluka, aka Dr. Calcano, and I am a first year family medicine resident studying and working here in Canada. I'm also a recent graduate of the McMaster University School of Medicine or the Michael G. DeGroote School of Medicine. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, this is video two in my 2022 updated cycle guides for applying to medical school here in Ontario. We did U of T last week. The disclaimers that I'm gonna say in the beginning are the exact same. I am not a part of the admissions committee. Nothing that I'm talking about is affiliated officially with McMaster admissions. And all the information that I'm giving you guys is publicly available on their website. I just think that not everyone knows where to look for it. So we're going to break things down, go over all the different stats, and hopefully give some people just a few tips on getting ready to apply to medical school here in Ontario. Now, McMaster does a very good job at providing all of the admissions data regarding statistics on who gets into their program, and it's all on their website. So we're going to go over it. Just going to let everyone know these are some crazy numbers that we're seeing this year. We talked about it last week. The Ontario medical schools tend to and continue to be some of the most competitive medical schools to get into anywhere in the world, unfortunately. What we see from this last cycle is that we had 5,605 applicants, which I think is one of the highest number of applicants anywhere in Canada. Uh, there were a total of 560 interviewees and then a total class size of about 205 people that actually made it into the program. So about 10% of people that apply will get an interview and then about 3.7% of everyone that applies and gets into the school. So the admissions rate is still pretty low. This one's very important when it comes to the grade point average and we'll talk about it in just a little bit. McMaster's minimum GPA that you are allowed to apply with if you meet the minimum is a 3.0. But what you can see here is the majority of students do not have a 3.0 when they get in. Only three students came in from the 3.0 to the 3.49 bracket per GPA. Uh, seven came from 3.6 to 3.69. That's where I would have fallen. Uh, 18 from 3.7 to 3.79. 29 from 3.8 to 3.89 and the majority the overwhelming majority of the class was between a 3.9 and a perfect gpa the mean gpa of this year's class has gone up significantly and continues to almost every year we are at 3.91 right now which is now the car section of your application is the only part of the MCAT that they look at and again more of that to follow later but the average car score for this recent accepted class was a 129. So we are really getting up there in terms of car scores. No one got accepted with less than a 123. And it looks like the majority fell between 128 and 130 for the most part. Now, one thing that I really appreciate about how McMaster lays out their admission process for their medical school is that they give you exact percentages for what they're looking for and how they select who gets an interview and then who moves on to actually make it into the class. In order to get an interview, there are four different parts that they're gonna be looking at and only four. They're looking at your undergrad grade point average, your MCAT, but only the car section, your Casper score, and then extra bonuses for graduate degrees. So basically 32% is going to be given for your GPA, 32% for your car score, 32% for your Casper score. And then if you have a master's degree, you get an additional 1% bonus. If you have a PhD, then you get the 1% for the master's and an additional 3% for your PhD for a total of a 4% bonus to your overall score for your application. Whoever has the highest score from all of those things, they make a list and then they send those next people on to do the interview process. Once you are doing the interview process, then the selection formula changes. 70% of your final score for who makes it into the actual class will come from the interview. 15% will carry over from your GPA from the first part, and then 15% comes from the MCAT, the CAR score. The CASPER score gets dropped in the final selection process. Now that is it. That is the most basic breakdown you need to know if you're applying to the school. But I've seen time and time and again, there are so many additional questions when it comes to what are they actually looking at? Who gets to apply? Am I eligible in different cases? So we're gonna go over all of those specifics right now. Starting off with the academic requirements. These are the things that you need to have done to even be eligible to apply to the medical school. One of the things that you need to know from the get-go is that you do not need any prerequisite courses to apply to McMaster University. You don't need to come from any particular background. You don't need a science bachelor's, for example. Any university level degree should be eligible to make you apply to the medical school. Now for their absolute finite requirements, there are four that they list here on the website. The first is that by May of the year of entry, applicants must have completed a minimum of three years of undergraduate university degree level work. Basically, if you are coming from a college background and you don't have three years of university level work, you can't apply to the program. Similarly, if you are in your first year of undergrad, you can't apply to the program. You have to meet that first requirement. And let's say you get in 
partway through your third year. They also say on here that by the time you get accepted into the program, before the class starts, you need to submit your grades showing that you passed the minimum 30 credits that is outlined by their admission requirements. The second thing you have to know about is the GPA. Now, we already talked about the GPA is worth 32% of your entire application before the interview process, but you also need to know that there is a finite lower limit, a cutoff of a 3.0 you need a 3.0 out of 4 on the OMSAS scale in order to even apply to McMaster, and I don't think there are any exceptions as far as I know. If it's less than a 3.0, you probably cannot even get into the school from everything that's been shown publicly. And the way that they use the GPA calculation is that they look at all of the courses that you've ever taken at an undergraduate level. That includes summer school courses, that includes supplementary courses, and they weigh them all equally. All of the different courses from all of the different years, regardless of first year versus second year versus third year, they're all looked at exactly the same. They'll add them all together, they'll divide by the total number of courses that you've taken, and that will give you your average GPA and what they will use to determine both the cutoff and when you're actually using the GPA competitively for the rest of your application. Now, there are two special exceptions to note here. The first is for pass and fail or credit and no credit courses. These courses are going to be used for credit, but they are not included for your GPA calculation. So if you've passed a course that is just pass or fail, that is used to satisfy the 30 credits that you need to apply does not affect your GPA calculation at all. But the second thing to note and the second exception is that someone who has completed all of the requirements of their undergraduate degree in less than three years by the time of the application deadline, who also meet the minimum GPA requirement of a 3.0, they could still apply to. So if you finished your undergrad in two years, for example, you did all the courses, everything you had to do, and you had a 3.8 or a 3.9 or a 4.0, you are still eligible to apply to the medical school. The third requirement is for the MCAT test. Every single person who applies to the medical school has to write the MCAT test. You have to write it since after 2017 and before the deadline for this cycle, which is 2022, an MCAT that you wrote is good for five years. You get five years to use that MCAT score once you have it. Now, let's say that I wrote the MCAT and I did okay on it, but I wanted to bring up my score. So I wrote the MCAT again. McMaster will look at the most recent MCAT that you did, not the best. So if I scored a 129 in the car section and I wanted to bring it up for, to a 131, but I wrote it again and I got a 127 doesn't matter because that is now my most recent MCAT, they will be taking that. So there's always a gamble if you're considering whether or not you want to write the MCAT test again to try and improve the car section of the MCAT because that is the only section that McMaster will be looking at. Now in the past, I've heard students say all kinds of different things that they were going to write only the car section of the MCAT. They weren't gonna study for the MCAT, they were just gonna go and write cars so they could try and apply. And that is definitely a strategy that some students have used in the past. I've heard stories about it being successful. I've never been able to verify those myself. My advice for anyone considering doing this is that I'm of the mentality that if you're going to write the MCAT test, just take the summer, take your six months if you don't have a summer off where you can study for it and do the MCAT right. Use a real study schedule. I would not advise any students that I'm working with to just write the MCAT test for the car section because medical school admissions are so competitive and you just need to try to make yourself as competitive of an applicant at as many different programs as possible when you write the MCAT. And then the fourth thing that you need to know when applying to McMaster Medical School is that every single person who applies needs to write the CASPER test. And I've done multiple videos on the CASPER test in the past. If you don't know what it is, I would really advise you to look into it a little bit more. But in summary, it is a situational judgment test type of test. There are some scenarios. You're going to write some responses after watching a movie or reading a prompt. It is worth 32% of your entire application. And I would really suggest that people take the time to prepare for that the same way that you would for the MCAT or a major test. Take a month to study for it. 32% is such a large chunk of your application. The CASPER test started with only McMaster, but it has now evolved to the point where many Canadian medical schools are looking at the CASPER test. You're going to write the CASPER test every single year that you apply, and the results are only good for one application cycle. If you scored really, really well, unfortunately, it only lasts for one application cycle. They break it down into different quartiles and they give you back a score report, kind of, for the most part. But basically, if you're going to, there are only a few situations where you need to write the CASPER test more than once. If you're going to apply to the University of Ottawa's French stream only, then you're going to write the CASPER test once in French and then once in English for all the English programs you apply to. 
Finally, there is a loophole exception where if you are applying to medical school down in the States, then technically you could write the CASPER test up to three times that year. It'll be one for the American schools, one for the Canadian schools, and one for the Canadian French schools. Now for the most part, that's it. That is everything that many students will need to know when it comes to applying to McMaster Medical School. There are a lot of other small little details. Please go and look up on their website directly to see the official guidelines for applying. But there are also four additional categories for applicants looking to get into the medical school. There is the best stream or the black equity stream, the indigenous applicants, the international National applicants and the military medical training program or the MMTP stream. I myself have not applied through any of these categories and as a result I can't really talk about them much but there is a pretty extensive breakdown for some of these categories that you guys can go and look up online by yourself. One thing that I will say though for many international students from other countries that are looking to apply to medical school here in Canada and who have asked me what their odds of success are during the application cycle I'll just say that for the last two, three, four cycles, and even if we just look at the last cycle for McMaster, there was not a single international student that was accepted into the program, at least that was shown on the document that we had up on the screen earlier. And therefore, just from everything that I've seen, your odds of success as an international student really are not the best. But anyways, everyone, that is everything that I have to say for the Med School Admissions Guide for McMaster University here today. I'm happy to answer any questions if I can in the comment section below. I also did a review about my time at McMaster and spoiler alert, I really liked it. I really thought that medical school at McMaster was a good time. It was a really great learning environment and just a whole bunch of other stuff you can see in that video. But we will see you all in the next one. Thank you so much for stopping by and best of luck to everyone applying. Take care.